So good afternoon. Thank you for joining us at the School of Nursing for my annual State of the School Address. This year, we have a printed program that lists the names of individuals who hold leadership positions within the university or the School of Nursing. It also highlights honors, awards, and recognition that individuals have received since last year. At times today, rather than reading names, I will refer you to the information that is in your program. With that, I'd like to begin by acknowledging our colleagues from the senior leadership of the University of Maryland, Baltimore. Jay Perman, President, and Bruce Jarrell, Executive Vice President, Provost, and Dean of the Graduate School. And my fellow deans, Dean Barth, Natalie Eddington, E. Albert Reese, Mark Reynolds, and Donald Tobin. And our administrative officers, Stephen Davis, Susan Gillette, Jim Hughes, Kevin Kelly, Jennifer Lichman, Peter Murray, Don Rhodes, Tom Sullivan, Roger Ward, and our colleague, MJ Tui. I want to warmly acknowledge our partners from the University of Maryland Medical System and from the University of Maryland Medical Center, Robert Krenchek, Mohan Santha, Lisa Rowan, and Greg Raymond. And I also want to mention that Dr. Rowan will receive the Dean's Medal for Distinguished Service at the Nursing Convocation in May. I also want to welcome our School of Nursing Board of Visitors and thank them for their dedication to the school. Their names are on the screen and in your program, but in particular, I want to recognize retired Rear Admiral Elizabeth Niemeyer, the chair of the board, and I want to thank her for her leadership, including the spectacular address she gave to our incoming BSN students during the Baltimore White Coat Ceremony in February. Admiral Niemeyer succeeded John Bing as chair this year. Mr. Bing has graciously agreed to turn his talents to the Capitol campaign, and we are grateful for his continuous service to the school and the university. The School of Nursing's Alumni Council consists of 24 alumni and three student representatives who contribute to the school of their time and their talent. Their names are listed in the program but I want to especially recognize Carmel McComiskey, the current president of the association, who is director of nurse practitioners at the University of Maryland Medical Center. I also want to note that we are recording this event so that members of the Alumni Association, more than 22,000 living alumni in 50 states and around the globe, can view it on our website. Special thanks to the administrative and academic leaders of the School of Nursing and to our faculty, staff, and students. Although I'm the one standing here this afternoon, I can only do that because of the individual and collective commitment and hard work of many people. We could not possibly accomplish all that we do without everyone's considerable efforts. Thank you for all that you do. It is an important time in nursing as we respond to the evolving needs of our patients, our communities, and the healthcare system. Addressing this has implications for all aspects of our work as, as a school, in education, research, practice, and service, and for our vision and strategies for the future. As I talk about the accomplishments of the past year and the challenges ahead, I want to frame this in the context of two forces that are driving changes in what we do. The first, at the national level, is in the often cited 2010 Institute of Medicine report, The Future of Nursing, Leading Change, Advancing Health. Now eight years old, implementation of the report's recommendations continues nationally and here in Maryland. These recommendations have reshaped the landscape of nursing education and all aspects of the nursing profession. I will say more about this later. The second, at the state level, is the need to ensure that Maryland has the nursing and healthcare workforce to provide effective and compassionate care to individuals, their families, and our communities. We take seriously our responsibility as an institution within the University of Maryland, Baltimore, and the University System of Maryland to serve as a leader for excellence in nursing throughout the state. As we respond to these forces, our actions are informed by the 2017-2021 Strategic Plan for the School of Nursing and the foundation provided by the University Plan. We are now about one year into implementation of the plan and it has guided our priorities. 
And finally, the university's capital campaign provides new opportunities for philanthropy at the School of Nursing as we share the story of how we are addressing the needs of society. I want to begin my review by focusing on how we are preparing students for an environment that is characterized by the growing complexity of care, multiple sites of care delivery, and an increasingly diverse population with growing numbers of elderly persons. But before I do that, I want to show a brief video that helps bring this to life. I think if you were to walk by any of our classrooms and you would really notice that they're very diverse and the school has really done a great job trying to create a culture of civility and inclusiveness of all of the students. They also bring a wealth of varied nursing experience to the table um, and beyond that they have really interesting life stories and lived experiences that they also bring to the classroom. We really work to help our students progress and really caring about the whole picture of the student and not just their academics but really helping them to work through the struggles and the trials in nursing school as they matriculate through so that they can serve the workforce of Maryland. The University of Maryland is one of the most reputed schools around here and I've always wanted to go to University of Maryland while I was in community college so it's like a dream come true to me. I was lucky enough to have my school where I did my associates program to be affiliated with the University of Maryland. And I just found the University of Maryland was the one that was ranked higher and had more experienced faculty. Everybody that I spoke with in the field always made it very clear that the school to shoot for would always be University of Maryland because they had the best professors, the most resources, one of the best hospitals in the states. That was the program that I really wanted to take my education to the next level. We try to employ many different learning modalities for the students. So they may write about things, they may take quizzes on things, but then they also get a chance to apply things that they're learning in the lab or with standardized patients, and then they can really bring that right to their clinical practice. We really try to help cultivate and build our students to be nursing leaders. So when they graduate, they really feel like, I've done this before, whether it's on a mannequin or with a real patient. The faculty has been so supportive. They been so helpful. They really make you feel like they're invested in helping you with your education. Upon graduation, our students are ready to provide quality, compassionate, family-based care. I am able to affect the patient care as well as the clinician experience in a positive way for an entire medical system. Our FMP graduates overwhelmingly stay in the state of Maryland. They hail from many different communities in Maryland, and they are a diverse and committed group of individuals. We are producing a large number of highly qualified, safe practicing nurses who are really eager to get out there and enter the workforce, uh, work with patients, and represent the University of Maryland School of Nursing. We're invested in developing the next generation of nurses for the state of Maryland. I hope the video gave you a sense of the commitment of our faculty and staff to the educational mission and to meeting the needs of Maryland. Earlier, I referenced the 2010 IOM report. It called on schools of nursing across the country to implement a series of changes, including to increase the percentage of nurses with baccalaureate degrees to 80% of nurses by 2020, to ensure a workforce equipped to deal with the growing complexity of care to double the number of nurses with doctoral degrees, to increase the number of nurses prepared for advanced practice, teaching, research, and scholarship, to increase the diversity of the nursing workforce, to make it more representative of the population it serves and better equipped to provide culturally competent care, to implement early and continuous interprofessional collaboration to respond to the growing emphasis on team-based care, and to provide opportunities for continuous learning across the spectrum of a nurse's career so that nurses are equipped to respond to changes in nursing practice and in our systems of care. This national call to action, along with the focus in Maryland on ensuring that we have the healthcare workforce needed for the future, has significantly changed our academic program offerings and our enrollment patterns. 
The School of Nursing educates entry into practice nurses through our traditional upper division baccalaureate program and through our master's degree clinical nurse leader specialty, which is designed for those who already have a degree in another field but wish to enter nursing. We also offer master's, doctorate of nursing practice, and PhD programs, which prepare nurses to provide exceptional care within an advanced practice role as educators and as nurse scientists generating new knowledge and translating it to the bedside. Overall enrollment growth, preparing more individuals to become nurses, is important in Maryland. Data from the United States Department of Health and Human Services indicates that Maryland is one of four states in which will have an anticipated shortage of 10,000 or more registered nurses by 2025. Preparing more nurses at the baccalaureate level also meets the need for future nurses to have a higher level of education. And it responds to the needs of Maryland's healthcare employers. Increasingly, they prefer to or, or require nurses to hold a baccalaureate degree or higher. National survey data from schools of nursing indicates that 86% of hospital and healthcare employers are now expressing a strong preference for baccalaureate prepared nurses, and 49% are now requiring baccalaureates of all new hires. So how have we been responding to this? Enrollment in our entry-level baccalaureate program and our RN to BSN program continues to grow, both on the Baltimore campuses and at the universities at Shady Grove. In fall of 2017, 850 students were enrolled in our undergraduate baccalaureate program. This includes 660 students in the traditional BSN and 155 RN to BSN students and 26 RN to master's students. These are nurses who are either a, have a nursing diploma or an associate degree in nursing who are returning for a baccalaureate degree or a baccalaureate degree plus a master's degree. The overall baccalaureate program has grown by approximately 27% since the fall of 2013. Our goal is to also increase access to baccalaureate nursing education for individuals throughout Maryland. This is in keeping with the university's strategic plan to provide academic programs and offerings that are affordable and accessible to Maryland's residents of all races, ethnicities, and income levels. Currently, 39% of our baccalaureate students are studying at the universities at Shady Grove in Rockville, Maryland, demonstrating the importance of this location for students from the capital region and the western areas of the state. To increase accessibility and prepare more nurses, we continue to create partnership agreements with Maryland's community colleges. These agreements provide seamless transition into our baccalaureate program for students who complete their associate degree in nursing at a partner school. As you can see on the map, we have grown the number of dual admission agreements with associate degree programs throughout the state. Last year, we had six agreements in place. Now we have agreements with 10 of the 15 community colleges in the state, and you can see their names on the slide. A further development is to allow associate degree students at a partner school to begin coursework at UMB as special students while they complete their associate degree and to offer financial support for this. As an upper division baccalaureate program, we have increased the number of transfer students from the University of Maryland College Park and the University of Maryland Baltimore County. We are now seeing the results of having formalized the pathway for transfer into the School of Nursing from College Park in Baltimore County. This academic year, we admitted 33 students from College Park and 22 from Baltimore County. And since fall of 2016, we have enrolled 109 students from our two sister institutions through the pathway program. These various partnerships are helping students obtain their baccalaureate degree in an efficient and cost-effective manner. Over 94% of our BSN students are Maryland residents. The average student loan debt for a baccalaureate student is $18,908 for attendance at the School of Nursing. It is $28,994 when debt from their prior undergraduate education is included. And during fiscal year 2017, our undergraduate students received over $7.8 million of aid through loans, grants, and scholarships, with 55% coming from loans. 
Our Conway Scholars Program has enhanced our ability to recruit and support baccalaureate degree students. This program provides full scholarships to entry-level baccalaureate students and RN to BSN students. And we are grateful to Bill and Joanne Conway for their continuing philanthropy and commitment to nursing education. I'll say a little more about them later. It has taken tremendous effort on the part of many individuals to expand our baccalaureate program. Thank you to everyone who is making it possible for us to respond aggressively to Maryland's need for baccalaureate educated nurses. Turning to our master's program, we enrolled 569 students in the fall of 2017. 57 of these were coursework only students. Although our advanced practice registered nurse master's program specialties have transitioned to the doctoral level, we continue to offer master's level specialties for registered nurses in community public health, health services leadership and management, and nursing informatics. We enrolled 286 students in these specialties, and I want to thank the specialty directors for their hard work. Our entry-level master's degree, the clinical nurse leader specialty, had an enrollment of 226 students in the fall of 2017. Designed for individuals who want to enter nursing and who already hold a bachelor's degree or higher in another field, it is another means of increasing the number and preparation of nurses. CNL students bring diverse prior educational and work experiences to their study of nursing. Graduates of the program are known for their skills in problem solving, evidence-based practice, teamwork, leadership, and management. They thrive in high acuity, fast-paced healthcare environments, such as the University of Maryland Medical Center. I want to thank the leaders of the master's program. They are listed in your program. Turning to our doctoral programs, in the fall of 2014, we began converting our advanced practice nurse education from the master's level to the doctorate of nursing practice degree. This has been a significant undertaking, which included developing new curricula and a system for faculty mentoring of an increased number of doctoral level culminating projects. The growth has been dramatic. In the fall of 2013, we had 89 DNP students. This year, we have an enrollment of 473 DNP students, a 531% increase over the fall of 2013. In 2006, when we began our DNP program, under the leadership of Dean Emeritus Janet Allen, the School of Nursing was one of only 20 programs in the nation and the only one in Maryland. Today, there are over 303 DNP programs and another 124 are being planned. This fall, to improve access for students from around the state, we expanded our Family Nurse Practitioner Program to the universities at Shady Grove and welcomed an initial cohort of 12 FNP students. This is our first graduate level program at the Shady Grove location. Thank you to everyone who has been a part of managing this exceptional programmatic growth. The School of Nursing's PhD program, launched in 1979, was the 16th doctoral nursing program in the United States. Given the intensive research requirements of the PhD program, we have chosen to maintain a level of 50 to 55 students per year. But we've created a new focus on BSN to PhD or D career trajectory and are recruiting BSN prepared nurses for doctoral work earlier in their careers. This is part of a national conversation about the need to educate nurse scientists earlier to provide for a longer doctorally prepared career. As part of our strategic plan, we are targeting PhD recruitment in specific areas of research that are priorities for the School of Nursing thereby building a continuum of research expertise from the level of doctoral students and postdocs to the leadership level of professor. I am grateful to everyone who's worked to ensure the continuing rigor and impact of our PhD program. In summary, looking quickly at the changes in program enroll enrollment since fall of 2013, you can see continued growth in our undergraduate program, strategic reduction in enrollment in our master's program, and the corresponding growth in enrollment in our DNP program as we have transitioned the advanced practice nursing master's specialties to the doctorate of nursing practice. 
Our enrollment growth and the transition of the advanced practice nursing, while absolutely necessary in order to address societal needs, has brought some challenges. Increasing the number of baccalaureate students while also transitioning master's level programs to the doctoral level has challenged our funding model as entry level students are more expensive to educate. We are looking to the University of Maryland system to explore options for a modest limited increase in undergraduate tuition to help offset the higher cost of educating these students. With an increase in BSN students, we are also challenged in finding clinical sites and practicum preceptors for entry-level programs. Ratios of faculty supervision have shifted from one to eight to one to five to six, which puts pressure on hiring and retaining sufficient numbers of clinical instructors. In 2016-2017, we had 276 clinical sections with 1,643 students and an average of 6.2 students per section. This year, we have 284 clinical sections with 1,707 students and an average of six students per section. Makes my head spin. R and BSN practicum placements for public health are particularly difficult to secure beyond West Baltimore. And we're also challenged in our DNP program with clinical placements, particularly in outpatient practice sites and in mental health. In response to our increasingly overall adjunct compensation, in, in response, we're increasing overall adjunct compensation to be competitive with other schools of nursing and we are creating a new two-tiered structure to better recognize and reward long-standing adjuncts and to increase retention. As we face challenges in finding clinical sites, our clinical simulation labs and our standardized patient program assume even greater importance. We have been fortunate during the past year to be able to expand and upgrade our simulation labs at the universities at Shady Grove which will allow us to respond to the larger number of entry-level students at the location and the anticipated growth in the family nurse practitioner program. Our standardized patient program is a true collaboration between the School of Medicine and the School of Nursing. Launched in 2000, it has evolved to not only educate medical and nursing students, but also provides interprofessional teaching and learning opportunities across the professional schools of the university. During the past year, as an outgrowth of opening the University of Maryland Medical Center's urgent care facility on the first floor of the School of Nursing building, in Baltimore, we had the opportunity and good fortune to be able to expand and upgrade our standardized patient program. This included a total redesign of the space to create a more realistic clinical environment and installation of state-of-the-art audiovisual equipment and technologies that enhance the ability to provide feedback and assess student performance. You will recall that implementation of interprofessional education to better respond to the emphasis on team-based care was a recommendation of the IOM report. And as you know, it is a priority of the university under President Perman's leadership. Interprofessional education is thriving at the School of Nursing and throughout the professional schools across the campus. On April 4th, we held the sixth annual Interprofessional Education Day. Over 300 students from across the university and from the university, in the university of Maryland College Park participated and 35 faculty facilitators guided the student exercises. In late January, 50 faculty members from various schools participated in fa a faculty development session. The keynote presentation on interprofessional education in a real-world clinical setting was presented by a panel of faculty from the schools of nursing, pharmacy, and social work. I want to thank my two colleagues who serve as co-directors of the university's interprofessional education center, Dr. Dave Malott from the School of Medicine and Dr. Heather Congdon from the School of Pharmacy. Before I leave the subject of our academic programs, I want to share with you the recently announced 2019 U.S. News and World Report rankings of graduate nursing programs, which includes master's and doctor, doctor of nursing practice programs. Our rankings are shown on the slide. 
you'll see that our nursing informatics master specialty continues to rank number one in the nation. And each of the master's and DNP specialties that we offer and which are ranked are all listed in the top 10. We have one master's specialty, community public health, and two doctoral specialties, pediatric acute care nurse practitioner and neonatal nurse practitioner, that are not covered by the US News and World Report in their rankings. But I have no doubt that if they were ranked, they would also be in the top 10. This external recognition is a great tribute to our faculty, staff, students, alumni, donors, and partners, and to everyone who supports our work. Please join me in congratulating the school and those involved in these programs on this impressive achievement. As we continue at the state and national levels, working to foster a more diverse nursing workforce, the diversity of the School of Nursing's own student body remains a point of pride and differentiates us from many schools of nursing across the country. Recent data from the American Association of Colleges of Nursing indicates that nationally, approximately 33% of nursing students across undergraduate and graduate degree programs reflect racial and ethnic diversity. Our fall 2017 enrollment across our academic programs showed an overall level of racial and ethnic diversity of 46%. As you can see on the slide, this varies slightly among the degree programs. It can also vary within a program. For example, our nurse anesthesia specialty within the DNP program is a highly competitive specialty and has a 60% level of racial and ethnic diversity. Our male enrollment is 12%, and this reflects the thro slow growth of men in nursing also seen at the national level. I want to salute Larry Fillion, Associate Dean of Student and Academic Services, and the entire staff of the Office of Student and Academic Services for their hard work and dedication to creating the best possible experience for our students and our prospective students. It begins with the admissions process and how we recruit and enroll our diverse students and continues as we guide and support each student along their journey to becoming a nurse or advancing their education. This ranges from course registration and clinical placements to counseling and career planning. In our Student Success Center, we have created an improved model for academic advisement and career planning. And we work with students to address any issues they may have, whether academic or financial. Currently, as part of our strategic plan, we're rolling out targeted, targeted initiatives for each degree program designed to foster student success. This work goes to the core of who we are, and we are fortunate to have a great team in place. So thank you for all of your commitment. I spoke last year of the changing face of nursing, not only as it relates to increases in racial and ethnic diversity, but with respect to the growing number of first-generation students and students from varied socioeconomic backgrounds. As part of our strategic plan, we want to ensure a vibrant learning environment where students, all students, can succeed. And we want to promote respect and inclusiveness for students, staff, faculty, and all who interact with the School of Nursing. In January of 2016, we established the Office of Diversity and Inclusion with the appointment of Dr. Jeff Ash as our first Associate Dean for Diversity and Inclusion. Before I speak of our progress, I'd like you to hear from Dr. Ash. Diversity and inclusion is everything. Race and gender get most of the airtime. However, we are much more diverse than our race and gender. We are diverse in our age, our socioeconomic levels, our education, where we are from, how we think, how we communicate, how we learn. You'll hear me say in and around this building, every transaction counts, every interaction counts, because it's likely an encounter with somebody that's different than you in some way. 
We need to prepare the, the next generation of, of nurses and nursing leaders to be able to really effectively administer quality health care. So it's really important that they are culturally competent and really able to connect with people. And ideally, uh, diversity and inclusion helps improve health outcomes, particularly where there are disparities in, in underrepresented groups. With Dr. Ash's comments as backdrop, I want to highlight some of the important activities of the past year. This year, we launched the first phase of our strategic plan, and we've began to, an effort to more rigorously define student success, and then to analyze whether there are identifiable gaps in student achievement occurring within any segment of our student population. This is a collaborative effort with the university's Assistant Vice President of Institutional Research and Accountability, Greg Spangler. In particular, we have examined retention and graduation, looking at whether our students are graduating within the same time frame, and if not, whether they do indeed graduate. We are currently in the process of trying to understand the factors that are contributing to disparities between various student groups. Assessing and then addressing this achievement gap will have implications for how we recruit, admit, teach, and support our students. We have addressed other issues around diversity and inclusion. We have made major strides in growing a culture of safe space with our LGBTQ community. We now have five safe space trainers at the School of Nursing, and 45 individuals have been trained. We're engaging with each other through our Diversified Thinkers Book Club where 45 faculty and staff members use a shared book as a springboard to discuss issues of diversity, inclusion, race, and privilege in a supportive environment. Overall, nearly 100 individuals are serving on committees or participating in groups related to fostering diversity and inclusion. This year, we launched a significant professional development effort for faculty and staff around the difficult issue of implicit bias. This fall, our Professional Development Day included presentations by Russell McLean, the Associate Dean of Di for Diversity and Inclusion at the Carey School of Law, and Dr. Lee Cox, Vice President of Inclusion and Institutional Equity at Towson University. Our goal is to ensure that all faculty and staff become aware of how implicit bias can potentially impact our interactions with students, our hiring and promotion, and our interactions with each other and members of the larger community. We will continue to address this during our upcoming Spring Professional Development Day at the end of this month. 96 faculty and staff members participated in the fall session, and we expect similar participation this spring. So none of this is easy work, but as a school, we've embraced the effort as part of our commitment to student success and to inclusive excellence. These are pillars of our strategic plan, and I am heartened by the commitment of the School of Nursing community to do this important work. As we go forward, we continue to strive to create a culture for the School of Nursing that will truly make it a better place to work and learn, a place that values inclusiveness, civility, and respect. Another pillar of our strategic plan is to conduct high-impact research and scholarship to improve health outcomes. We are extremely proud of the research and scholarly work of our faculty. In summer of 2017, we launched a multimedia campaign designed to highlight the caliber and impact of research at the School of Nursing. It focused on five areas of research, and it was designed to make the research accessible to our alumni, colleagues at other schools, as well as students, faculty, and friends of the School of Nursing. The campaign covered research topics such as managing chronic conditions in older adults through the use of e-learning and patient portals, the impact of pesticides on children, the link between vaginal micro microbiota and preterm birth, a leading cause of infant death, restoring the circadian rhythms of adolescents through chemotherapy, and using technology-enhanced care interventions to manage HIV symptoms and improve quality of life in older women of African descent. Here are a few excerpts from the videos. Nurses are the largest healthcare profession 
and we spend most of the time uh, to take care of our patients and to educate patients and their family caregivers. And we cannot really provide quality safe care without evidence. And evidence cannot happen or cannot be formed without research. It's really important that nurses who have the clinical experience also have that research knowledge on top of it so they can ask the right questions, understand what needs to be improved so that we then have the evidence to put into practice. We look at not only the acute problem, we look at changes in lifestyle, and then we look at their entire life and to the way they are integrated into the community. The public is, I think, beginning to see we're actively engaged in determining what the issues are and um, how patients should receive treatment. And I think nursing science will really help to promote that view of nursing. If you go to our website, you can see the individual videos and read more about examples of research at the School of Nursing. Although those in academic nursing understand and appreciate the rigor and importance of modern day nursing research, for many individuals, both health professionals and lay people, there is still a need to elevate the profile of nursing research. One measure of our research enterprise is our national rankings in terms of the aggregate dollar value of research awards from the National Institutes of Health. For fiscal year 17, I'm pleased to report the School of Nursing ranked 15 among all schools of nursing in receipt of NIH awards. And we ranked number eight among public schools for NIH awards. During fiscal year 2017, we received 11.4 million in funding through grants and contracts. And as of February of the current fiscal year, we are just over 5.8 million. We have a robust array of current grant awards that represent ongoing multi-year awards. You can see selected examples of these on the slide. Because of the multi-year nature of many awards, particularly large NIH grants, we tend to experience a cyclical pattern. New awards decrease in the year or two following receipt of a number of significant awards due to the startup cycle that occupies researchers at the outset of an award period and reduces new applications. This year, we are in this phase of the cycle. A few examples of significant new awards are shown on the slide. As we continue the tradition of cutting edge nursing research at the School of Nursing, one of the challenges we face is our ability to recruit nurse researchers. This includes both junior researchers with postdoctoral experience and mid-level researchers. As demand for nurse researchers continues to grow and as the supply of highly qualified research intensive faculty members lags behind the demand, we are finding that we're not always competitive from the standpoint of salaries with other highly ranked schools of nursing. As part of our ongoing strategy for conducting high impact research, we will continue to work to determine how we can best address this issue. This year, we also received five new Nurse Support Program II grants. These grants are competitive institutional grants that are an important means of implementing initiatives to increase the number of nurses and nurse educators in Maryland. Those who receive these grants and their projects are listed on the slide. Other research funded by the Maryland Higher Education Commission is also listed. We are proud of this strong showing and the important scholarship that this work represents. This year, we, were, we are also pleased that the University of Maryland Baltimore received a two-year, $1.2 million grant from the Maryland Community Health Resources Commission that supports interprofessional care through a clinic established at the University of Maryland's Prince George's County Hospital Center campus. The Nurse Support Program, too, also provides fellowships for new nursing faculty members and doctoral grants for practice and dissertation research. This is part of an effort to respond to Maryland's need for nursing faculty and faculty educated at the doctoral level. Many of our current faculty members have been recipients of these fellowships and grants in the past, and this year's recipients are listed on the slide. Congratulations to each of you. We are also creating opportunities for continued professional development and learning, including the Nurse Leadership Institute. This is a five-year statewide initiative funded by the Maryland Health Services Cost Review Commission. 
It is designed to create opportunities for academic nurse faculty and clinical nurses to work together on innovative projects to improve health outcomes for Maryland residents. Fellows are selected annually from schools of nursing, hospitals, and other healthcare systems from around the state. In your program, you can see the list of the 2017 fellows and their affiliated institutions. This is an extraordinary opportunity for academic nursing faculty and clinical nurses to work together to improve health care. In keeping with the need for lifelong learning for nurses and other health professionals, our certificate and program offer offerings are numerous. And these include our Institute for Educators, which provides programs to prepare nurses for faculty roles in Maryland nursing schools and for educator roles in clinical settings as well as ongoing professional development through workshops and its teaching grand rounds. It also offers the Teaching and Nursing and Health Professions Certificate. Our conferences include our nationally acclaimed annual Summer Institute in Nursing Informatics, now in its 28th year, and our Institute for Simulation Educators. And we host one-day events such as the Home and Community-Based Care Symposium later this month and an annual interprofessional forum on ethics and religion in healthcare. As I finish speaking about our research, scholarship, and lifelong learning, it is appropriate to acknowledge the activities of Sigma Theta Tau International, the Honor Society of Nursing. Several months ago, Sigma Theta Tau shortened its name to Sigma but it is still the same organization promoting excellence in nursing. The School of Nursing's Pi chapter is one of the oldest and largest chapters of Sigma, and we're very proud of the chapter's efforts to promote nursing scholarship and leadership among our students, alumni, and faculty. Congratulations to Chapter President Charlotte Seckman and the chapter officers for their efforts to make certain that Sigma is a vital part of the life of our school. And special congratulations to Dr. Erica Friedman, who was recently named an honorary member of the international organization and to the chapter. We want to recognize them because they were recognized as a showcase of regional excellence for its activities and lifelong learning category, including co-sponsoring educational offerings such as the Dean's Lecture Series. The School of Nursing is deeply committed to community engagement. Our collaborations extend from West Baltimore and throughout Maryland, the region, and globally. This engagement in our community creates opportunities for innovative curricular activities with experiential learning for our students. Our students are able to explore pathways to service and leadership. And these collaborations also create opportunities for interprofessional education and for service. There are numerous examples of our community-based projects, and a few of these are included on the slide. The Governor's Wellmobile, our daily bread in Christopher's Place, Montclair Overlook Apartments, Roland Park Place, the University Center for Community-Based Engagement and Learning. In addition, this year, 67 members of the faculty and staff were trained in how to administer naloxone, a small but very important part of our institutional response to the opioid crisis. Also, during the past year, our faculty and staff councils have created new opportunities for volunteering at the university's community engagement center. And finally, a number of our faculty members were recognized this year for their contributions to our community and nation, whether through building partnerships with healthcare institutions, le leadership and advocacy on critical health issues, advancing knowledge, or meeting the needs of underserved populations. Please be sure to read about the recognition they have received for their work in your program. On the international level, our Office of Global Health builds nursing capacity and strengthens health systems through its international partnerships and programs. This summer, four School of Nursing students will be funded through the University Center for Global Education Initiatives to participate in ongoing global health projects led by university faculty. You can see their names and the projects that they will be part of on the slide. In March, two students traveled to Washington, D.C. to represent the School of Nursing at the American Association of Colleges of Nursing Alumni Student Policy Summit. 
They joined fellow nursing students from Johns Hopkins and were accompanied by several deans from Maryland schools as they made visits to the Capitol Hill to advocate for funding for programs important to nursing. Many members of our faculty are participants in the Maryland Action Coalition, which I can co-convene co with Dr. Patricia Travis from Johns Hopkins University. This statewide organization was established to implement the goals of the Future of Nursing Report. The Maryland Action Coalition's annual summit will be held on May 21st, and this year's theme is the culture of health through the lens of health disparities and the transformation of nursing education. Now, I'd like to turn my attention to several other important areas for the School of Nursing. First, our Office of Development and Alumni Relations. In keeping with our fundraising efforts tied to the capital campaign, our goal for the current fiscal year is $7 million, substantially over last year's goal of $2.75 million. And I'm very pleased to report that we will soon be at 136% of that goal. Over the past several years, we have worked to increase scholarship support for our students. This is particularly important because, as you recall, at present, the primary source of educational support for our students are loans. As a result of these efforts, we now have 121 endowed funds that provide scholarships for nursing students, and we have over 20 donors who, though unable to create an endowed fund, pledge student scholarship support on an annual basis. The nurturing of our alumni donors is a critical component to building a strong financial base that can support the education of our students now and into the future. Our Conway Scholars Program, provided by Bill and Joanne Conway through their Bedford Falls Foundation, has been transformative for the School of Nursing. Our first gift from the Conways launched the Scholars Program and provided $5.24 million of support for students in the traditional baccalaureate degree and for R to BSN students. A second gift announced last year provided $2 million to expand scholarships to students pursuing master's, DNP, and PhD degrees or the post-master certificate in teaching in nursing and health professions. And today, it is with great pleasure that I'm able to announce that we have a commitment for a third gift for scholarship support. This gift is in the amount of $10 million. So please join me. The Conways thank you for the applause. So do I. Today, we have awarded 106 Conway scholarships, and 20 Conway scholars have graduated. With this new gift, we anticipate that we'll be able to support an additional 250 scholarships, and we estimate that this will bring the total number of scholars over the life of the program to approximately 470. This is truly the kind of transformational gift that many schools can only dream of. As the leading public school of nursing in Maryland, it allows us to support the most qualified and deserving students. Through the Conway Scholars Program, we are creating a cadre of dedicated nursing professionals who will serve our communities for many, many years to come. As we enter the public phase of the university's capital campaign, we welcome the opportunity to build philanthropic support around the big ideas highlighted in the campaign, conquering pain, ending addiction, and curing critical diseases. These are all aspects of the current work of our faculty, and we, continue, we will continue to highlight the research and scholarship of our faculty as the campaign continues. It is essential that we leverage this opportunity to create additional resources for student scholarships, faculty support, and research. The School of Nursing's goal for the capital campaign is 36 million, and as of today, including the most recent commitment from the Conways, we're at 28.6 million, or 79% of our goal. Congratulations to our development and alumni relations team for their tireless efforts. The next area I want to highlight is our Office of Communications. On the screen, you'll see a few examples of recent work. How we communicate to the world 
and tell the story about the School of Nursing and the accomplishments of our students, faculty, staff, and alumni is integral to maintaining the visibility and the understanding of our programs that brings us future students, committed donors, and top rankings. It is also essential to our strategic goals of supporting our students in recruiting and retaining outstanding educators, research, scholars, and staff members. Since arriving in August of 2016, Gerardana Signeri, our Director of Marketing and Public Relations, and her team in the Office of Communications has taken us into new territory in advertising and marketing both in the area of social media and in the application of a data-driven analytic approach to evaluating our advertising and marketing efforts. During the past year, we have seen a beautifully redesigned website that is now more applicant and student-friendly, a daily Instagram feed of photos generated by and about members of the school's community that engages current students and warms the heart of our alumni, a redesigned magazine that tells our many compelling stories, and regular news postings about our accomplishments. These are just a few of the new developments that have occurred thanks to the phenomenal efforts of our four-person communication team. So thank you for all of your hard work. The third area I want to mention is our Department of Administration and Finance. Not an area we usually talk about. And although it may not sound particularly exciting, as you can see on the screen, it is core to one of the key themes in our strategic plan. That is to better harness data and analytics to transform our processes for decision making. The School of Nursing may be 129 years old, but it is nonetheless a modern business with an extremely competitive and complex environment. We need to have the best possible information at hand to chart our strategic course and to ensure that the School of Nursing continues to thrive. This approach extends beyond administration and finance to all areas of the school. We are seeing the results of this strategic emphasis in terms of how we have approached the important issue of the student achievement gap, how our communication team evaluates the value of our marketing efforts, and how we develop our grants process so that we can feed our research efforts with a steady infusion of financial support. I congratulate our finance and administration team for their efforts to build and support the analytic processes and to provide the data that we all need in order to make smart and timely decisions. So before I conclude my remarks, I want to share two additional pieces of news about our School of Nursing community. First, I'm very pleased to announce that President Perman has approved the appointment of Dr. Joseph Pru as Professor Emeritus. Dr. Pru retired in <laughs> Dr. Pru retired in December 2015, having joined the faculty in 1972. Among his many contributions, he oversaw the master's program in health services leadership management and was a co-principal in the design of several of our dual degree offerings. Dr. Pru gave generously of his time through his teaching, mentoring of students, and his service to the university, the profession, and our community. Dr. Pru continues to be a much beloved by his many, many former students and his colleagues. And we will announce this news in a formal release shortly, but I wanted to share it with you here today. Second, we've had several retirements during the past year, which we have celebrated with joy for the retiree and a sense of a loss for the rest of us. These are acknowledged in your program, but we do have one impending retirement that I'd like to note today. Barbara Dobish, assistant professor at the Universities of Maryland School of Nursing at the Universities of Shady Grove, will retire in June after 27 years of service. Barb has been an integral part of Shady Grove since we first began offering a program there. She has been a nurse educator for more than 30 years and is a past recipient of the Maryland Nurses Association Outstanding Nurse Educator Award. Barb is highly regarded for her dedication and commitment to teaching, excellence, and to our students. We will have a chance to celebrate her long tenure in May, but I did want to acknowledge her exemplary service today and let her know that she will be greatly missed. 
Finally, despite their protest, I'd like to acknowledge Jordana Signeri, the Director of Public Relations and Marketing, and Deborah Prout, the Special Assistant to the Dean, for their unwavering work on this year's State of the School. Thank you. In closing, it is virtually impossible to talk about and do justice to the many individuals who have made a difference at the School of Nursing in, and in our community and in the larger world. I hope that you will spend a few minutes and look at their names and accomplishments in the program. It will give you a sense of the enormous force of good that we represent, individually and collectively as the School of Nursing. Through the videos, I have tried to share some of the voices that represent this good within our school and community. I will end with a final video that illustrates how the good that we do extends outward from Lombard Street and Shady Grove and begins to transform the world at a level that is almost hard to fathom. The video reflects the work of our Nurse Leadership Institute, which you will recall prepares academic and clinical nurse leaders from throughout our state. But it actually speaks eloquently to all that we do. This program is second to none. It really reminded me as to why I became a nurse and the importance of paying it forward. I am where I am and who I am because of the mentors I've had. The right people at the right time. And to be able to have that opportunity to be that for somebody else is, I think, extremely exciting. I started to take those seeds that were planted in me and plant those in my leaders in the organization because I was a middle manager and I had a team that I needed to grow and support. There have been a lot of things written about being more Yoda and less Superman. To rush in and fix everything is great in the moment, but what that teaches us is that we're always there to fix everything. And being more Yoda, in other words, asking more questions and saying, hmm, what thoughts do you have or how shall we figure this out, is probably a better gift to give to your mentee. The commitment um, that the program had to developing me as a future nurse leader and me coming into this program has changed me and as a result of me changing it's changed the communities in which I interface and those communities are actually impacting the wider um, state and the state impacts the country and we are all stronger as a nation by having leadership programs such as this. In closing, my hope is that today's State of the School leaves each of you with a better understanding of our work over the past year and our vision for the future. But more importantly, I hope that it reminds you that what we do is only a very small piece of what we truly accomplish. Every action is indeed a statement. We are fortunate to have students, faculty, staff, and alumni who want to make a difference. Thank you to all for being here today. I invite you to join us for refreshments in the lobby, and I would request that UMB's senior administrative colleagues please come forward to the stage for our annual photo. Thank you.